Review. A Christmas Carol is haunting yet spectacular The narrative of Ebenezer Scrooge has been organized endless circumstances by neighborhood theater organizations. What's more, why not? It's an ageless story that is ideal for the Christmas season. However tainted theater fans would presumably say bah humbug to yet another variant of Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol with foresight of same old feebleness of this account of Yuletide recovery. Nine works theatrical and globe lives dull and mysterious creation of Lynn Orans and Alan Menken's A Christmas Carol subdues these desires with a light and sound display apparently made for advanced gatherings of people. At its center, A Christmas Carol, which opens Saturday, is truly a phantom story set in the London ghettos amid the Industrial Revolution. While this is still a family arranged musical, Nine works theatrical set out to convey this what setting to the globe iconic store organize. This adaptation of A Christmas Carol has the beats of a Disney motion picture. I suspected that the music was fundamentally the same as the hunchback of Notre Dame, especially amid the dim parts. The music was given equity by the 22-piece Nine Works Philharmonic Orchestra and visitor choirs that will show up all through the run. What first struck me entering the setting was the means by which the monstrous this set was. The set was three stories high and had islands and scaffolds that stretched out into the gathering of people. I imagine that it is ideal to pick a seat at the back to completely observe what is going on. This turned out to be more clear as the play advanced as such a large number of things were occurring in front of an audience that it was quite difficult to think forward and backward and take everything in. Miguel Faustman, himself a veteran of different renditions of A Christmas Carol, plays the grumpy person Ebenezer Scrooge. The character fits him like a glove. This time, however, there is a threatening quality to his Scrooge. Miss Saigon and American Idiot veteran Ariel Reynolds plays Scrooge's bound accomplice Jacob Marley. The main appearance of the character is terrifying and sets the tone for whatever is left of the apparitions. Norby David's ghost of Christmas past was perky and agile, taking Scrooge back to more joyful circumstances and demonstrating his possible plunge into a hopeless person. The ghost of Christmas present, capably played by Franz Imperial, conveyed Scrooge to the present, demonstrating how Yuletide happiness could be found in spite of the dull setting. This is the place I thought the creation delayed somewhat because of amplified move numbers and marginal off-color set pieces. And afterward there's Ella Saunders' Ghost of Christmas Yet to Come, a quiet effortless harbinger of the flames of perdition. Try not to squint amid this arrangement as things happen extremely quickly. It's uncommon to rave about the embellishments in a nearby theater generation, yet Nine Works Theatrical was not modest about flaunting their specialized dominance. From little touches like changing window hues to indicate different timetables to fear initiating ghosts, advanced projection, sound plan and lights made up to repackage an old story into a display today's group of onlookers can appreciate. A shock on Christmas morning in front of an audience with a cast singing the last tune makes for a standout amongst the most blissful finals I have ever observed on a neighborhood organize.